Hey guys, this is a segment from the Slump Buster podcast. You can find the full episode on any of the various podcast platforms, or of course, subscribe to us on YouTube for more of our content. Other than that, guys, sit down, bust the slump, and enjoy. Now, I guess I run a little bit counter to a lot of people, a lot of people in the mainstream media, and that saying that I don't think the Texans organization is that bad. Now, there may be some internal stuff that we can dispute over, whether it be the rise of Jack Easterby. And yes, he mentioned some great players there, Aaron Foster, Andre Johnson, DeAndre Hopkins, that they quote unquote ruined. Mm -hmm. But I don't look at them the same way I look at a Detroit Lions or a Cleveland Browns or a Las Vegas Raiders. This is what I'm saying. Because talk, going, talk me. <laughs> <laughs> because getting to the playoffs, I think is an accomplishment, and I think it is something that a fan base can be excited about. There's only one team that can win a Super Bowl each and every year, and I said this when the Niners lost in the Super Bowl. And yes, a Super Bowl hurt, loss hurts. It's one of the most hurtful things that I have ever experienced as a fan because it's so final. Just that walking away, knowing that everyone watched you on the biggest stage lose. But the fact is that my Niners made it to the Super Bowl. A Bengals fan can't come up to me and talk trash about my team losing in the Super Bowl when they finished with a 2-14 and 14 record. And I think that when we talk about the hierarchy of the NFL, the hierarchy of bad organizations versus good organizations, I think the organization that can consistently make it to the playoffs is in a better spot. That's why, actually, and I know this is controversial here, I thought Bill O'Brien was a good coach. What I will say about that is he was a good coach, but a bad GM. I think anytime you give a coach complete control of the roster, it just spells bad news. There's not a lot of organizations that have done well doing it. You could say Bill did well with it in New England, but the problem with the hoodie in New England was eventually his draft picks took over and Brady seemed to be steering the ship. And we'll get into that, I'm sure, when we get into the Super Bowl predictions here. But as far as Bill O'Brien, you look at his track record, what he was able to do also at Penn State, and the fact that even without Deshaun Watson, that team was making the playoffs, I think that that was a credit to him. Now that you fired Bill, now that you have Deshaun Watson piss, now that you're in this position where you don't know who exactly is, and you got like the 10th coach, 20th coach, 30th coach in line for interviews, I think that's why now we look at the Texans as a bad organization. And maybe over the next 10 years, they can be one of the worst organizations in the league. But as of just a year ago, when Deshaun signed that contract extension, they were a good organization. And to Kenny's point, I think the pushback is something that we're just having in society in general, right? It's no longer just good enough to get results. It's no longer good enough to just appear like everything is fine. Watson, he looks at the NBA and, and sees the player empowerment there, and, and he looks at his situation, and, and he knows the past behaviors of how these other stars have been grinded down and washed up. And he doesn't want to be 29, game starting to show cracks. You know, now he just has to go wherever he can. Right now, he's 25 years old. And essentially, there's at least 20 teams that could use him. So, hey, you know, if Carson Palmer could do it, you know, why can't I do it? People have called me Mike Jordan. You know, I don't want to waste away here. I don't want to give my best years to this organization because our values, you know, don't align. Well, would you say, though, if we're going to use the Michael Jordan comp, Michael was with the Bulls when they were a bad franchise, and then they ended up winning in his later part of his career as they continued to build versus Deshaun, who would be leaving the organization when times got a little bit tough. People would say that's more LeBron-esque than Michael Jordan, and I'm not a huge Michael Jordan guy compared to the LeBron debate. That's been discussed for years. We've seen Skip and Shannon go at it for decades, and I am so tired of it. <laughs> but I would at least say when we're using those comps, I would say Deshaun leaving at the first sign of distress in Houston sounds a little bit LeBron-like more than it sounds uh, Michael Jordan-like to me. Jordan didn't like any coaching hires, right? But he couldn't say, I want out. It was just a totally different time versus LeBron. He could do that. I guess my thing is, I, I get the player empowerment thing. I, I think that there are some positive qualities of it. But I do also want to say that I think it's also made the NBA a worse product. The fact that there is no attachment to players, there's a commercial that runs on national television that says, hey, if your favorite player leaves your team, you could trade your jersey back. I don't think that's a good precedent. And that's something that I don't personally want for the NFL, because I think the NFL is in a good position where it's good for the fans. The fans are attached to their team 
And I think when we have this being more attached to the players than the teams, unfortunately, it kind of dilutes the product. And that's why I think is one of the biggest struggles of the NBA. They're, the focus on making the sport more global than um, focusing on the teams and the fan bases themselves. Final objection, though, for that uh, Jordan reference would be the Bulls didn't trade Scottie Pippen in his prime. They traded, I mean, obviously, DeAndre Hopkins is more Jordan than Scottie Pippen, but they traded DeAndre Hopkins in his prime and didn't get a first-round pick back. They traded multiple players and didn't get first-round picks back. They gave up a third-round pick to get David Johnson. And David Johnson, I don't even think he hit 1,000 yards. J.J. Watt has even told Deshaun, like, man, they wasted J.J. Watt's career. Let's talk about that. Even with his injuries, they waste like, J.J. Watt was Aaron Donald before Aaron Donald, playing essentially three techniques. He's really a massive he's just tackle, like, defensive end athleticism. He's playing on a 3-4 defense, like, they wasted his prime. So if they wasting Captain America's prime and J.J. Watt, like, Deshaun Watson sees that. Yeah, I guess. Especially because he's happy to be there as an organization. That's why they gave up to Damian Clowney and didn't get a first-round pick back. Yeah, like, again, wasted is yeah. relevant, though. I mean, J.J. Watt has had opportunity to be in playoff games and compete. They were up 24 points on the Chiefs just last year. They could have been in the Super Bowl themselves. You could have made an argument that in the AFC Championship game, I could see them going over the Titans and being against San Francisco last year. Um, I think the Niners yeah. would have crushed them personally myself, but that's because I have a bias. <laughs> yeah, but there's like the other six times that the Texans made the playoffs, it was bad coaching calls by Bill O'Brien. Jerry Kubiak fell short. Like It's not just, oh, he, he wants to leave, he wants to – institute some form of power that players have never had before it's like no you're not gonna i see how calvin johnson got done you're not gonna hit me with a banana in the tailpipe i'm 25 he paid me i don't care what you get in return for me but just get me out of here see now if he was still under the rookie contract and not paid yet it would be harder than he would be moved but he's paid his contract is pretty friendly and if they want to send him to Miami and get back to Tua Tunga Lailova, you know, or they want to send him to the Niners and maybe get, you know, a Solomon Thomas and a Garoppolo, a first round pick, that's fine. If you want to send him to Oakland and you get a Derek Carr and a Josh Jacobs, you're not starting from zero. And I think the Texans don't want to start from zero, but it's like, well, you're just happy leveraging all of Deshaun Watson's talent instead of actually building something around him. If he was playing at Clemson, he wasn't doing everything on his own. He got a, a lights-out NFL-loaded defense. He well, wasn't that's the difference between college and the NFL. College, you can afford to do that. We're in a cap-structured league, and you mentioned it. He has gotten paid, and I mentioned that stat earlier. No quarterback that takes up over 13% of their team's cap has won a Super Bowl since Steve Young in the 90s. Steve Young won in 94. I was born in 94. Tells you a lot of like where we are and the difficulties of trading away such capital because I feel as though Deshaun could end up in the same spot where yes, the team's going to the playoffs consistently and maybe losing the first couple rounds, but is he going to go to a team and have a legitimate chance at winning a championship if they're trading away all their draft capital to get him? I think the, that he, it's just moving horizontally rather than moving vertically in his career if he does it. And I, I mean, I agree with you too, but that's why I say it's it's a personal thing because he's even considering the Jets at one point. There's some shit there, bro. Nobody's trying to go to the Trevor Lawrence ain't trying to go to the Jets. He's trying to get the fuck out of Houston. <laughs>